Wood ash has been used by gardeners for centuries, but only when you learn how to apply it correctly does it become a powerful, precise tool instead of a source of accidental soil problems. I learned this lesson early on when an experienced grower watched me toss handfuls of ash around my beds and simply said, you're either feeding your garden or ruining it. That stuck with me, and over the years I discovered just how valuable ash can be when it's applied with intention, proper ratios, and a clear understanding of what it does to the soil. If you've got a fireplace burn pile charcoal grill or access to clean untreated wood, this guide will show you exactly how to turn ash into one of the best soil amendments you already have at home. So ash works when you treat it as a soil amendment, not as a fertilizer substitute. Wood ash is, you know, rich in calcium carbonate and trace minerals, which means it behaves more like a liming agent than a fertilizer. In fact, cup for cup, ash can actually raise soil pH faster than agricultural lime. This is, honestly, both its strength and its danger. When used correctly, ash corrects overly acidic soil and unlocks nutrients that might otherwise stay trapped. But when used carelessly, it quickly pushes soil into alkaline territory, shutting down nutrient availability and stressing plants. The key is moderation. For most garden beds, the correct ratio is one cup of wood ash per square yard of soil, you know, once or maybe twice per year. Gardeners working with raised beds often use about one quarter cup per square foot, mixed into the top few inches. These rates help keep soil chemistry stable while providing micronutrients like potassium, magnesium and zinc. Using ash as a top dress works only when you apply it in thin, controlled layers. A thin top layer of ash can be one of the simplest and safest ways to use it, but only if the layer is so light that the soil still shows through. A dusting is all you need. Anything thicker becomes caustic, especially after rain. When applying as a top dress, the safest method is to sprinkle ash through your fingers while walking backward, so it falls like dust. The surface area treatment works best for root crops, garlic beds, perennial herbs and flowering plants that prefer neutral to slightly alkaline soil. After spreading, water lightly to help the ash settle and prevent it from blowing away. The top dressed ash helps buffer soil acidity over time and improves the availability of potassium, which strengthens stems and supports flower and fruit development. Incorporating ash directly into compost speeds decomposition but requires careful balancing. The compost pile is one of the best places to put ash if you want to avoid accidentally overliming your garden soil. Ash helps neutralize acidic compost ingredients and supports microbial activity, but only when the ratio is correct. The best guideline is one cup of ash for every six inches of compostable material added to the pile. If you add more than this, the pile drifts too alkaline and, well, slows down decomposition. Adding ash in alternating layers works particularly well. For example, if you add a layer of green materials such as grass clippings or kitchen scraps, just sprinkle a thin layer of ash on top before adding your next layer of browns. This balanced approach prevents odour issues, stabilises nitrogen and results in a compost that is more mineral rich and, honestly, easier for plants to digest. Creating an ash tea gives you a liquid mineral supplement that works fast without disturbing soil structure. Ash tea is one of the least known but most effective ways to apply nutrients from wood ash without affecting soil pH as dramatically. To make ash tea, mix one cup of sifted wood ash into five litres of water, stir thoroughly, and let it settle for 24 hours. 
After settling, the liquid is poured off and used as a mild foliar feed or soil drench. This ratio is strong enough to supply calcium, potassium and trace minerals, but dilute enough to avoid harming plant leaves. Many gardeners use ash tea during flowering periods or when plants show signs of potassium deficiency, such as weak stems or poor fruit development. For tender seedlings, ash tea can be diluted further using one part tea to three parts water. This method provides fast nutrition without changing the soil environment too quickly. Applying ash around disease-prone plants can help suppress fungal issues when used carefully. Another overlooked use of wood ash is its role in reducing moisture and creating a slightly hostile environment for fungal pathogens. To use ash this way, gardeners sprinkle a very thin ring, no more than a tablespoon or two, around the plant base, keeping it a few inches away from the stem itself. The dryness and alkalinity discourage fungal spores from spreading in overly damp soil. This technique is especially helpful in humid climates or during rainy seasons. However, this method should not be repeated too often. Once every three or four weeks is more than enough. Too much ash will dramatically alter soil chemistry and cause more harm than good. Right, so it's crucial to avoid adding wood ash to areas where acid-loving plants are growing. Blueberries, potatoes, raspberries, strawberries, azaleas, hydrangeas bred for blue blooms, and most woodland plants do best in acidic soil. Adding ash to these areas can actually weaken plants, reduce fruiting, or even increase susceptibility to disease. If you're ever unsure, just test your soil first. A simple pH test will tell you whether your garden can benefit from ash or whether you need to hold back for the season. Ash can be a powerful ally when applied with accuracy and respect for your soil's needs. The real secret to working with ash is treating it like a precise mineral amendment instead of a casual addition. When used correctly, ash can strengthen plant cell walls, improve flowering, stabilize soil acidity, and enrich compost. When used improperly, it can easily upset the balance you've worked hard to build. But once you understand its behavior and apply it with intention, ash becomes one of the most valuable tools in a gardener's toolbox, especially for those who want to maintain fertility without constant store-bought inputs. If you found this guide helpful and want more practical, soil-focused gardening methods that truly work, be sure to subscribe to Gentle Herb Living and share this video with fellow growers. The more gardeners understand their soil, the stronger our gardens and our harvests become.